Egi Ming Kaamba Minota and a Takadura subject the class 9 Amazon class in biology. Hello students. Today let's start a new chapter, your chapter number 17, Food Higher Yields. Okay, as we all know that man had been growing plants and rearing animals to meet his requirements as a part of agriculture. However, it did not fulfill his requirements, either in quality or in quantity. So they do, do what? They started to produce better varieties of plants and animals through a technique called plant breeding. So let's see first what is plant breeding. Plant breeding is the technique used to improve the variety of plants for human welfare. Various matters have been involved in this plant breeding, but the most important one is that of the selection. Okay, so here let's see what is the first prerequisite element of the selection. So here the first prerequisite of selection is the availability of variability, that is different types of forms. Here the plant population with desired character or desired feature is selected first and their progenies are grown further. This process is repeated until a uniform plant population is attained having that desired character we want. Okay. So here an application of statistics known as the biometrics is used in selecting the high yielding variety of plants. First let's see about the hybridization. Okay, as, as the name indicates, hybridization, it means what? It means the union, union of what here? Union of male and female gametes to produce a zygote. And here, the male gamete is from a particular species and the female gamete belong to another species. Here, in this hybridization, we are going to discuss about the two ways. Here, first one is about the uh, combination breathing. Here, in this combination breathing, an existing plant variety may be used as the what? Recipient parent. Okay, here the existing plant variety is the recipient parent, while many other uh, what is it, crop varieties or the wild var uh, relatives of, the, of that plant may be contribute as donor parents. Okay, and the first man, uh, aim of this combination breeding is to what? Is to transfer one or more desired characters from many varieties into a single variety of plant type. Okay, so that's about the combination breeding. Next, the second way of uh, this hybridization is the hybrid varieties. In this hybrid, what happened? These hybrids are commonly produced and selected because they have the desirable characteristics which are not found in the parent individual or the population. Okay, we are going to select what? Select the desirable characteristics or the desired features that are not found in the what? Parent individual. Here, the hybrids are formed between the individuals of the same or the closely related species, which are more robust or vigorous than their parents. This phenomenon is known as the heterosis or hybrid vigor, whereby in this heterosis or hybrid vigor, the progeny exhibits what exhibits of more or a superior phenotypic uh, characteristics over its parents okay so that's about the hybrid varieties next let's see how this crop production are managed okay so here for the increasing the food production different practices are done okay so first one let's see about the how this uh, how we are going to increase this food production first we are going to use the fertilizers Okay, so here, what are fertilizers? Let's see. Fertilizers are commonly produced plant nutrients. We all know plant nutrients, right? It supplies what? It supplies all those uh, requirements of the plant growth, like uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. They are used to ensure good vegetative growth, giving rise to what? Giving rise to a healthy plant. So these are all the requirements of a healthy plant. They are an important factor. They means what? The fertilizers. The fertilizers are an important factor in the higher yield productivity of the plant crops. Okay, but what? But the excessive addition of these fertilizers may damage the crop and even pollute the environment or the ground or even the surface waters. So to avoid such kind of pollution or such kind of problems, it is better to use the organic manures. 
Here, the soil nutrients can also be replenished. By what? By growing one crop alternately with another. And such kind of cultivation we call as the crop rotation. And this crop rotation, they do what? It increase in the nutrient content of the soil. Okay, that's about the first step of what well, to say for increasing the crop production. Next is about the manuring. So let's see what is manure first. Manure is prepared by the decomposition of what? Decomposition of animal excreta and plant waste. It helps what? It helps in enriching the soil with nutrients and organic matter which are found in that animal excreta or plant waste. And it also helps in what? It also helps in the increasing the soil fertility. Okay, so that's about the manure. Again, uh, we all know what is biological waste, right? So on the basis of that kind of biological waste we use in uh, making that manure, it is classified into different types. Here uh, we are discussing about the types of manure. Okay, so first one is about the compost. Then second, we are going to discuss about the vermicompost, then green manure, then farm yard manure, then uh, oil cakes. Okay, so first let's see about the compost. So what is compost? First, let's see. Compost is, uh, are all those kind of biological waste or manure which are found from the farm waste material, such as livestock excreta, which includes the cow dung and all that, and even garbages, which includes all those uh, vegetable waste or animal refuse, then domestic waste. Even those or oh, sea waste waste also. Okay, so such compost or such kind of material is decomposed in what? In peats. We all know what is peats, right? It's a hole in the ground. Okay, so these are all decomposed in the peats, and this process of decomposition is called as the composting. And this compost is rich in organic matter and nutrients. Okay, here again we are can classify the compost into two types here. First one is about the rural or village compost. Rural or village compost means all those uh, which are uh, prepared from the farm waste, right? Then second one is the urban or town compost. And this kind, uh, such kind of uh, what do you say, compost are prepared from the town waste or night soil. Okay, next see uh, about this vermicompost. So here vermicompost means what? Vermicompost is the end product of the what? Of the decomposition of plant and animal refuse. Which includes all those decomposable garbages. Animal refuse all contains, includes all these uh, decomposable garbages with the help of some species of what? Species of earthworm. Yes, we all know what is earthworm, right? So here, uh, such, uh, this is such process of producing vermicompost is called the Bharmi composting. Here I have mentioned that we have uh, we use uh, the, the different species of earthworms here, right? So some we can mention some uh, like um, red wrigglers and scientific name is Eschenia fetida, okay, or even red earthworms like Lumbricus rubellus. These are all species of earthworms which are used in used as vermi composting worms, okay. What? Such kind of earthworms, they do what? They improve the soil aeration and rich the soil with what? Microorganisms and even it improves the water holding capacity of the soil. It even enhance the plant growth and crop yield also. Okay, so that's about the vermicompost. Next one is green manure. So here in green manure, in this uh, what say, production of green manure, let's see what are the, all the process involved in this green manure. See, prior to the sowing of the crop seeds, what happened? Some plants like sunham or guar, these are all the leguminous plants, okay? See, they are grown first in the field. They are grown first in the field and after some time, they are left uprooted to wither on the field itself so that they serve as mulch. Mulch is nothing but the layer of material formed by the decaying of such kind of, uh, what do you say, such plant parts like leaves, twigs, branches, roots and all that. Okay, so they are formed by the, uh, what do you say, decaying or decomposed, decomposed material of the plant itself. Uh, mulch again. Okay, so mulch means what here? This mulching, mulch means plowing, plowing them into the soil. Plowing them means what? That mulch, that layer of material which are formed by the decomposition of the plant parts. Okay, we are going to plow them into the, where? Into the soil itself. This improves the physical condition as well as the fertility of the soil. 
and all this process we refer to as the green manuring and the manure obtained by this method is known as the green manure okay next is about the farm yard manure a kind of here manure itself from uh, biological waste which are formed from the biological waste let's see first what is farm yard manure here it is a mixture of solid and liquid excreta from farm animals as the name indicates farm yard manure so here the, it's a mixture of what i have said the mixture of solid and liquid of the farm animals excreta okay along what along with the litter or left out material from the uh, rough gazes or even further fed, further fed to the cattle okay we are going to mix that and that mixture we term it as the farm yard manure and its chemical composition is nitrogen phosphorus potassium and water itself okay so that's about the uh, farm yard manure next let's see about the oil cakes so here as name indicates they are going it's going to form from the oil seeds so here uh, oil cakes are the byproducts of the oil seeds which act as organic nitrogenous manure okay virtually everything present in the seed extracted uh, fertilizer is beneficial is beneficial to what beneficial to plant propagation and soil fertility itself okay so that's about the oil cakes so today we have learned about the various methods of uh, the crop improvements there uh, for better yielding and even different practices of crop production management okay we will continue the class in next class